There are a few situations where you might be working with more than one camera. Weddings, live music and interviews are some that immediately spring to mind. Often, if you're on a lower budget, you might need to work with a mismatched set of cameras in these scenarios, and with different sensors, the colours produced between the cameras might be inconsistent, especially when it comes to colour grading your footage. It might take hours tweaking specific colours between cameras to try and match them up and make them more predictable to work with, but there's a much easier way to do this inside DaVinci Resolve that can save you a lot of time. The Color Space Transform tool in DaVinci Resolve is a very efficient time saver when you need to match colors between different cameras. Here, we've shot with a Panasonic Lumix S5, a Nikon D800, a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro, and a Canon C200. Each of these cameras have different sensors, and some are much newer than others. When we think in terms of age and how this affects the capabilities of our cameras, it's difficult to imagine cutting four sensors like this together, especially with such a large generational gap in camera terms. Each camera has its own resolution, colour space, dynamic range, and profile to capture this dynamic range, along with different video codecs and bit depths, affecting the overall quality and colour information in the image. But it's not actually that difficult to get a good match between these cameras, regardless of their differences. So let's start grading our footage. All of our clips are currently ungraded, and you can see we've shot in each camera's respective log profile, except for the Nikon D800, which doesn't have any form of log, so we had to shoot straight to a colour profile with added contrast and saturation. Let's say the Blackmagic Pocket 6K is our A cam, so we want to start our grade with the clip shot by this camera. In this case, let's keep it simple and apply a LUT designed for this camera and its colour space. Blackmagic's extended video LUT. Now we could right click and grab a still of our grade, then apply it to one of our other clips. But this is going to cause us big headaches attempting to match everything up with the original clip, since we're trying to force a LUT onto an unsuitable colour space and gamma curve. So instead, let's put our other cameras in a better starting position to interpret the Blackmagic LUT more accurately. We'll start with the Canon C200 clip, shot in Canon's RAW format. In the effects menu, we'll select the colour space transform and drag it into our node. Here, we simply need to select what colour space and gamma our clip was shot in, so our input, and then the colour space and gamma we prefer our clip to be in now, so our output. In the case of our C200, we're shot in Canon's Cinema Gamut colour space, in Canon Log2 Gamma. We want to treat this clip like it was shot in the same colour space and gamma as our Blackmagic Pocket 6K, which was shot in Blackmagic Design's Wide Gamut Gen 5 colour space, and Blackmagic Design's Film Gen 5 gamma. So now, with our Canon clip colour transformed into the same colour space as our Blackmagic clip, we should simply be able to apply the Blackmagic Extended Video LUT and get a similar image to our Pocket 6K. That's pretty much it. Our Canon image just needs warming up a bit. We can use the image wipe function to compare our current clip to the still of the Pocket 6K clip we grabbed earlier, and simply do this by eye. Here, we'll just push the temperature up a bit. Pull the tint down a bit toward green. And push our highlight wheel back toward purple just a little. If we want to go a bit more in depth, we might notice the blues in the Canon clip are a little different. We can fix this by creating a separate node. And using the hue versus hue, 
and hue versus saturation curves to select the blues in the image and tweak the tone and saturation of these blues just a little bit, making for a better match. So now we've got an image shot on a Blackmagic Pocket 6K and a Canon C200 using the exact same LUT with near identical tones and colours. There may be some minor variations due to angle, different type of lens and the speed in which we completed this match, but look how close we can get to matching two cameras with this speed using just a couple of simple adjustments. For our Panasonic Lumix S5 clip, we just need to do the same thing as with our Canon clip. Color space transform from the effects menu. Input color space Panasonic V gamut. Input gamma. Panasonic V log. And output color space Blackmagic Design wide gamut Gem 5. Output gamma. Blackmagic Design film Gem 5. We'll add our Blackmagic Extended Video LUT. Again, we just need to make a few further adjustments to complete the match. So we'll add another node after the colour transform and before our LUT. Our Lumix clip is exposed a little hotter than the other two clips were. So we'll push down the offset and reduce some highlights. Now we just need to warm up the image a little and push the tint a touch toward purple. We'll finish up by taking our shadows down a little to deepen the blacks and match our other image a little better. Now we have three clips from three separate cameras shot in three different colour spaces, all using the same LUT looking very similar. Now our fourth clip, shot of the Nikon D800, is the odd one out. It's a pretty old camera, not primarily made for video, so it doesn't have a log profile to shoot in. This means we already have contrast and saturation baked into the file, so a colour space transform will be a little more destructive here, as we'll be converting it back to a log gamma and pushing detail out of an image that might not necessarily have that detail to begin with. On top of this, the D800 has less dynamic range than the other cameras, but it is still possible, even in this scenario. Let's add in our colour space transform once again. This time, we'll be selecting our input colour space and input gamma as sRGB, since this is a colour space and gamma our D800 shoots in. Once again, for our output colour space and output gamma, we've selected Blackmagic Wide Gamut Gem 5 and Blackmagic Film Gem 5. We'll add our Blackmagic Extended Video LUT. And, like previously, we just need to make a few small adjustments. We'll add a serial node, take our gain down a bit, our highlights down a bit more, and boost our shadows just a touch. Compared to the other images, we're still looking a little contrasty, so we'll take that down a tiny bit too. And we'll bring our log wheel shadows down slightly to make our blacks a bit blacker without affecting the highlights. A slight temperature push toward warm, and a touch of saturation. Our blues are looking a little different again, but using the hue versus hue or hue versus saturation curve this time isn't going to serve us very well, since we have less information to work with in this image due to the lower bit depth of the D800. We have less flexibility and much more bleed into other areas of the image if we try to tweak the blue in the sky. So we'll use the qualifier and narrow down just this particular section of sky. Then make our hue adjustments. So you can see that although we can perform a colour space transform on a lower quality codec, 
not shot in a log format. We start introducing issues like this. And you can see even though we've tried our best to match this to our other clips, it's probably the weakest in comparison in terms of luminance values and colour. But overall, it still works. And if we were cutting between a D800 and a higher performing camera in an environment or scenario where subtle changes may be less obvious, we might find this to be much less of an issue. And now that we've matched up all of our cameras, we can make colour adjustments to any one of our clips, regardless of the camera it was shot on, and it will transfer predictably over to another. We'll just group our colour space transform and matching adjustments into a compound node on each clip. And add a new node for our new adjustments. Now let's say we want to make a sweeping adjustment to the highlight end of our image and warm it up with the gain wheel. Let's do this on our D800 clip. Now we can just copy this node with Control C and paste it with Control V in the same place on the node tree on the other clips. And our colour adjustment is the same across the board without any frustrating surprises or unexpected colour shifts. This means we can also change the way we're grading entirely. We can remove the extended video LUT and grade from scratch ourselves. Or we can use a film emulation plugin like Dehancer. Whatever we do after our colour space transform and matching adjustments will carry across into each clip, allowing us to grade easily and quickly for all of our cameras. So we've taken four clips from four different cameras with four different sensors, all of different ages, different dynamic range, and with different codecs and bit depths and we were able to quickly match them up with some simple adjustments. Although it's always best to shoot with the intention of allowing post-production to run as smoothly as possible, we all know the reality of working on budgets and not being able to hire eight Arri Alexas. Tools like the Color Space Transform allow us to shoot with what we have or what we have access to and might even help you to get some use out of that older camera you didn't think you'd shoot with again.